Good evening. Our missionaries, you don't see on the screen because the projector's turned off. They timed out the Pratt family. <clears throat> oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Psalm 105, verse 1. We're thrilled to share the latest news about our church planting adventure in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Since our last update, God has been at work in remarkable ways. And we want to praise him and express our heartfelt gratitude for your faithful prayers and support. Without you and your faithfulness to God, we would not be able to be here. On August 1st, 2023, we began planting Faithway Bible Baptist Church out of our house in the Belmont community, which is located on the southwest side of Calgary. Since then, we have been blessed with 13 first-time visitors and praise God that four of those individuals have accepted Christ as their Savior. It brings us immense joy to report that almost all of our first-time visitors have become regular attenders. And as a part of our burden, we have provided each adult visitor with a new Bible. This not only emphasizes the importance of God's Word, but also establishes unity in our studies as we discover biblical truths together. It may surprise you that most of our visitors have never owned a Bible. Bibles are very expensive here and can be hard to find. They are amazed and excited that we are giving them away. As a result, they are more connected to our studies and show that they are taking time to read their new Bible throughout the week. Currently, we've been gathering for worship on, Wednesday night, on Wednesdays and Sunday nights. Our vision is to make these evenings a significant part of our worship week, and our services are firmly centered on the study of the Word of God. We dedicate a full hour to study and discussion as we explore God's Word verse by verse, touching the core doctrines of our faith. This strong foundation in biblical teaching is shaping our congregation and building a solid understanding of our faith. Our services are held in the garage of our house where we come together for fellowship in our kitchen and living room. That's a multi-purpose. The basement has been transformed into our children's ministry area and even a mission apartment. We came to Calgary without a team, but God has faithfully provided. People in our community are hungry to learn the word of God serve, follow, tithe, and even support missions. Yes, you read that correctly. We are actively supporting our missions program. In just a short time, our small church has developed a deep passion for missions, both in prayer and giving. We're currently supporting five missionaries. It's not much, but it's an important start in developing our hearts for fulfilling God's commands and sharing the gospel. Once again, thank you for your faithfulness to the Lord and keep praying. God is answering. God bless the Pratt family. And there's another two notes on here that are not part of the main, main box. And I encourage you guys to read it, I believe, is out there on the mission kiosk. Let's pray. Dear my Father, Lord, I thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you provided for us. Thank you for the opportunity that we have to come and to hear from your word, just as they are doing up in Canada. I pray that you'd continue to work in the hearts and lives of those that have just gotten saved and the rest of the visitors, if they're not saved, I pray that they would uh, come to know you as their Savior. And I pray that you would help continue to strengthen them. And Lord, there's probably going to be enough adversity that may come their way. I pray that you just continue to encourage them, that they would trust you um, as you are trustworthy. Thank you for all that you provided for us by way of our salvation and theirs. It's a blessing uh, to us to know that people are trusting you and that we're going to have more added to our family. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Brother Phil. Appreciate it. Stand, if you will, uh, turn in your hymnals tonight, if you'd like to, page number 609. Page 609, we'll sing all five stanzas. No, not one. Page 609.
friend is so meek and lowly. No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one, no, not one. There's not an hour that he is not near us. No, not one, no, not one. No night so dark, but his love can cheer us. No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one, no, not one. Did e'er a saint find this friend forsake him? No, not one, no, not one. Or sinner find that he would not take him? No, not one, no, not one. Jesus knows all about our struggles. He will guide till the day is done. There's not a friend like the lowly Jesus. No, not one. No, not one. They're giving me, they're giving me, from the sound booth I'm getting these, it's all kind of, it's not sign language, it's, it's sound booth language. <laughs> it means nothing to me. They're saying there's only four stanzas, but there's actually five. But it's not up there. You only have four. They've got five because they got books in front of them. Oh, see, look. All right, so let's go to the next song. We'll, we'll, we'll bail them out back there. They, they need to learn how to keep up, don't you think? They learn how to keep up back there. You got, don't. <laughs> page 636, page 636, if you would, please. I must tell Jesus. Now, there's three stanzas on this one, unless you have an extra one that carried over from the last one that you didn't have. You might have just next. That's only two. There's three. Okay, there's three. All right. There's two fingers and a thumb on this one. All right, so <laughs> three. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> there's 636. You have three like that? Yeah. <laughs> I must tell Jesus. Tell him about the sound people. I must tell Jesus all of my trials. I cannot bear these burdens alone. In my distress, He kindly will help me. He ever loves and cares for His own. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. I must tell Jesus all of my troubles. He is a kind, compassionate friend. If I but ask him, he will deliver. Make up my troubles quickly in hand. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Oh, how the world to evil allures me. Oh, how my heart is tempted to sin. I must tell Jesus and he will help me. Over the world the victory to win. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, 
I cannot bear my burdens alone. I must tell Jesus, I must tell Jesus, Jesus can help me, Jesus alone. Wonderful singing after a big lunch. You may take your Bibles now as we honor the reading of God's Word. You can get my director's chair ready, Philip. Um, I considered keeping us standing through the whole afternoon message to make sure the food flows, um, but I won't do that to you here in just a second. Philippians chapter 1, say, Pastor, we were there this morning. Yes, we're going to look at the first part of chapter 1 this afternoon, verse 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always, in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, and as much as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers of my grace. You may be seated. Knowing that we were going to be enjoying lunch together, I got to thinking about fellowship for this afternoon. Here, Brother Paul is talking about, again, the church at Philippi, and he's thanking them for their fellowship in the gospel. The word fellowship refers to partnership. It refers to a joint participation. It is something that we share together, fellowship. We share together. In these verses, there are several ways that I believe we see where we can fellowship, where we can join together in the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want to look at these before we get down to the sit down with the pastor. So notice, first of all, in verse number three, we fellowship in the gospel by giving thanks. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Brother Paul was thanking God for this church. He was thanking them for their participation with him in getting the gospel out in in the area of Philippi and, and for their sharing to help him as he continued to go around and and preach the gospel and, and, and know the work that he was doing. It, it, it's good to be thankful for those who are helping the ministry, who are helping in getting the gospel uh, to out as, as many as we possibly can. It, it, it makes a difference in this church. And I am thankful for your work together to get the gospel out in various ways to various people, to get the good news out to those which are lost, and to support the needs of those out amongst us and away from us regarding our missionaries and the blessings that that we are able to experience because of what they're doing in their particular area of the world. Uh, Got to see a a few of the missionaries that we support for our church last week uh, in Canton, and and, uh, just uh, they are so thankful uh, for our faithful support and to hear about what God's doing uh, in their ministry. So it makes a difference, and we fellowship together in the gospel. We, We all come together to be able to support the missionaries that we support and to do what we 
can do and what we do do uh, in the Lord and that. So it's good to give thanks. Fellowship in the gospel by giving thanks. Secondly, verse number four, we fellowship in the gospel by praying. He says this, always in every prayer of mine for you all, making request with joy. Here is specific prayer for this church. Brother Paul is stating here, I want you to know I am making request for you. I am petitioning God for you. He's specific with them, and they were to know that. I, I mentioned last week the immense privilege that we had and that we have in praying uh, to our God who loves us and encourages us to communicate with Him. It's a privilege, a blood-bought privilege. Jesus gave His life's blood so we could come before the Father and we could come before Him and we can bring our request and bring our petitions and, and bring our supplications unto him. And, and, and God brings that to us. And, and this is what brought joy to Brother Paul. It, it, it brought him that joy of knowing, listen, I can pray for you. It's an amazing thing. God is. We have a, a missionary that's going to be with us in November that started when I uh, scheduled him a couple months ago saying, is there something I can pray with you about your church? And every week, just about, he sends and says, is there something else? Or do I need to continue to pray about this? He hadn't even been here yet. But he's praying for us. We have the opportunity to, to pray for others and, know, and, and them know that we're praying for them. Some of you let your missionaries know that you took in February, that, that you let them know, praying for you, asking God to bless in your ministry and, and supply uh, for you. Some of what Brother Paul was praying for is listed for us in chapter 1. Jump down, if you would, to verse number 9. Again, specifically praying for this church, and he says this, and this I pray. So he's telling him, this is what I'm praying for. That your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment. That you may approve things that are excellent, that she may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Here is this love that he's praying to this church that, that they would have and it would abound, and it's the word agape. It's that sacrificial love. It's that love that seeks the best for the individuals. And, and here he says, I'm praying for this love. I'm praying that there would be that increase for you, that there would be that sacrifice, uh, uh, that, that love sacrifice that, that is extended, and, and you may have that to, to grow in, in knowledge, and you might grow uh, in judgment, that ability through the love of Christ to discern what is right and what's wrong. Hebrews chapter 5, keep your place, but go to there. Because this is and it's something that uh, I had conversation with this past week and, and I've touched on before in the opportunity that we have to grow in our faith, to mature, um, and, and realize that there are some things that we determine, and that's what Brother Paul dealt with a lot in 1 Corinthians, you guys need to grow up. Because he says you're his babes, remember? It, and somebody has to tell a child or a babe, this is what you need to do. And this is why you need to do that. In maturity, you're able to determine this is right, this is wrong, this is okay, this is not okay. Verse 14, Hebrews 5, But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, mature, 
even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. So God wants us to grow into that area, and he's praying for this church to discern, to say, it's okay for me to eat meat. It's okay for me to eat pork. It's okay for me to eat shrimp. It's okay for me to wear pants, ladies. Guys need to. <laughs> um, and for some, they say, it's not okay for me. I, I, I can't eat pork. I, I can't eat shrimp. I can't eat catfish. I, I can't wear pants. That's there discernment. It's not right for them. So maturity says, I can do this, and it's okay for some. I just can't. And the Scripture is very clear on that. And so he says, I want you to be able to do that, and I'm praying for you in this area that you might grow. Okay? He was praying for the best in their lives. He, he was praying that they might honor uh, the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's, and he's wanting them to, to have that in their lives and, and, and in their ministry here and, and have those things that are excellent, the best. He says, I'm also praying for the power of the Spirit of God in your lives. I want you to have that evident. I want you to enjoy the fruit of the Spirit. That's what he's saying. And he brings that to them regarding the ministry of the Spirit of God, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, the love, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, the gentleness, the faith, the meekness, the temperance, the spirit control. Okay. Temperance, I never have liked the definition when you get the temperance, that's self-control. Well, it's better to have spirit control um, uh, on that. And so he's praying for them to increase uh, in, in that area. And, and, and God wants us to know, as, as Brother Paul was doing here, he was praying for them, and we can pray for others, just like Brother Paul was doing here, praying for these. And when we do it, it'll make a difference in our own lives as well as the lives of those within our church as we pray for each other again and with each other. And so we can fellowship in our prayers. Third, we can fellowship in the gospel by faith. We fellowship in the gospel by faith. Notice verse 6. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. He had faith in what Jesus Christ could accomplish, the power of the Lord, the ability of the Lord. And we've been seeing that some through our Sunday school time, in the ability of Jesus Christ, the authority, the power of Jesus Christ to do what he will because he created everything. Therefore, he has the authority to do what he wants to and can do with it, like multiplying bread and fish. And so it says, here's this faith. I have confidence that Jesus Christ can accomplish anything. God had a purpose for them. And what he was doing in them and what he was going to do for them. He was confident of that. That he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. That confidence, that, that faith that he had was, was in what could be done through the Savior, through the Lord Jesus. As a willing servant of our Lord's, Brother Paul had complete confidence in what the Lord wanted to accomplish, and he wants us to have that same confidence that he can accomplish all that he wants to do in us. Back in 1 Corinthians 15 and 58, and realize that 
we can know that what we're doing for the Lord, what we're doing in the Lord, is not in vain. It's not empty. It's not useless. 1 Corinthians 15, 58, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. It's not in vain. As we fellowship together in the gospel, in the good news, in the work of the ministry, and we do it by faith, we can know there's a purpose for it. We can know there's value in it. We can know it's not in vain. Then fourth, we fellowship in the gospel through love. Verse 7, even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have you in my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and defense and confirmation of the gospel, you all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. Just a good Texan, isn't he? I know he's got the OU in there, but, you know, just that y'all just keeps coming out. Brother Paul is stating here that I have you in my heart. I have you in my heart. He had such a feeling for them that they weren't just in his head and they weren't just on his lips. They were in his heart. Again, as we've seen in the past, this word heart here is the Greek word cardia, K-A-R-D-I-A. That's where we get our cardiologist from and, and all that in a cardiogram. And it, it deals with our pumping organ, but here it's not dealing with the pumping organ. It's dealing with the core of our thoughts. It's dealing with the core of our feelings, and so I said, I have you in my cardia. I've got you in my thoughts. I've got you in my feelings here. He, he, he longed to be with him. That's where he was at. He longed to be with them. Also, in verse number 8, I long after you all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. It's not a term we use much anymore, okay? But it dealt with the most inward affections that seat and tenderness and the sympathetic emotion that's entailed with that phrase. I not only have you in my heart and in every area of my emotions and every area of my thoughts, but I also have you in the deepest part of my feelings. I, I have the most inward affection for you. I have in the seat of my emotion those feelings. And so Brother Paul is, is just letting them know just how much that they meant to him. These folks at Philippi. And in the deepest way that he could explain it, he said, you're in my heart, and you're in my bowels. I just want you to know the depth of love that is there. He wanted them very much aware of that type of love. He, he wanted them very much to know how important that they were to him. It, 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 as far as he was concerned and what he was letting them know, it isn't going anywhere. It isn't going anywhere. It was going to be the same for them because they had grabbed his heart. They had grabbed his heart. It's the love that Jesus Christ wants us to have for him as well as for each other. Look back, if you would, to John 13. John 13, what he was telling his disciples there in the upper room before they were getting ready to depart and him 
go to the garden area where he'd soon be arrested and tried, mocked and beaten and then crucified. But he lets them know at the end of this meal, in verse 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another. As I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love one to another. If you express it, if you show it, it's the love that he wants us to have for each other that Brother Paul had for this church at Philippi. And then lastly, we fellowship in the gospel through our ministry. We fellowship in the gospel through our ministry. Verse number 12. But I would, you should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. What we see here in Brother Paul letting them know that he is still ministering, even though he is in bonds, arrested, chained with the prisoners or with the, 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 the soldiers, he's still ministering. As far as he was concerned, it was what he was supposed to be doing. It was another way for him to further the gospel. I mean, he was coming into contact with those that he normally would not have, right? I mean, you don't come in contact with soldiers in jail unless you're in jail. And so he was furthering the gospel through them. Not only could Brother Paul not go anywhere, but they couldn't go anywhere. Who was captive, (laughs) as far as that goes? And so he's ministering to these individuals. And so recognize, and he's letting them know here at the church, understand that, that the gospel's being furthered in my situation right now. So it really doesn't matter regarding the ministry that we have. Our ministries are varied here at our church. We have the ministry of Sunday school, and we've got Sunday school teachers and helpers. It's a ministry to further the gospel. Amen? We have the ministry regarding our choir. It is a ministry, and not many churches have choirs anymore. They are gone. They're done away with. And so it's good, and it's a ministry. It takes work. It takes effort. It takes time. But it's a ministry. And we minister through song and want to be a blessing to those that hear. (laughs) So the ministry of the choir. We have the ministry of our junior church of those who are willing to teach, and it'd be nice if we had more because it's tough for four-year-old through fifth grade to be in the same class. But that's all the help we have right now. But the ministry of junior church, teaching those kids about the Lord, what God can do, what He's done in the Word. It's a ministry. We have the ministry of of Brookdale. Brother Jim and Bobby go over to Brookdale over here on Fredericksburg Road, right there at Blue Mel and Fredericksburg, and minister to those people over there. It's a ministry. We had Brother Tony Bean here this morning from Brookdale. Just here, just moved here from Tennessee. And so he's just right now in search of a church, but we're pretty close. And and so that ministry over there, ministering to those who sometimes can't get out, but ministering to those over there. We have the ministry of our ladies, ladies' meetings, the the, uh, 
what you just enjoyed, ladies, uh, many of you got to enjoy in the retreat and ministering in that area. All of these are to further the gospel of Jesus Christ and to get the good news out to those who are lost, to let folks know, hey, listen, Jesus is the Savior. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And to be able to minister to those. And, and Brother Paul was saying, listen, where I'm at right now, where I'm ministering, this is for the furtherance of the gospel. I'm ministering to these soldiers that I may not have ever had a chance to before. And how many of those soldiers got saved? We know several did, according to Brother Paul's testimony, because the gospel was pretty much spread throughout the palace. And they went back to their homes and told their families, this is what I was told today. This is what I did today. This is what we need to do. And how many families got saved because Brother Paul was witnessing to these soldiers? He said, I'm ministering here. You minister where you're at. You, you minister what, what you're doing. But Christ was going to be magnified through Brother Paul regardless of what was taking place in his life. He was going to testify of Christ's saving grace. He was going to be able to minister however he could minister. And that's what he wants us doing. Wherever we're at, whatever situation we might be, whether elementary school, junior high, high school, college, in the workforce, you have an opportunity to minister to folks that others will not and to be a testimony for Jesus Christ, to further the gospel of Christ. God wants us in our fellowship to partner together to get the gospel out to a lost world. Regardless of where we're at, He wants us to be joined together to see all of this accomplished, to see us working together by giving thanks, by praying, by faith, through our love and through our ministry. And I pray that God would help us to see us fellowshipping in the gospel. Every head bowed, if you would. Every eye closed for just a moment. We're just going to have prayer. But maybe there's an area in your life that you just sense, you know what, I, I'm not partnering together. I'm, I'm not fellowshipping in this area. Maybe you would just ask the Lord, Lord, help me, whether it's in the area of thanks or praying or faith or love or ministry. Lord, would you just help me in this area or areas to fellowship more effectively? Father, I come to thee now in the name of Jesus, and I thank you so much for our church. I thank you, God, for all that you've allowed us to, to do, to see accomplished, and yet knowing that there's still so much more to do. The need is greater now than even what it was 31 years ago. I pray that you would please bless us. Help us, Lord, to know your presence, to know your power. God, that you would accomplish all that you want us to do in ministering together, fellowshipping together in the gospel. I thank you, Lord, so much for all the work that is done. Please help us to be in fellowship with you. Lord, if there is an area that 
we need strengthened. Please help us to be strengthened in it. Bless, I pray. Have your will and way in each of our lives and in this church. For I pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, thank you for the food for lunch. And Brother Philip will get the chair. I uh, will give you just a, a, a reminder. Um, I will take questions as long as you have questions. If you need to leave at any point, I will not get offended if you need to leave. When the questions are done, we'll be done Okay, uh, on that. Don't just make up questions, but if you have questions, um, because we will have a choir practice uh, after this. Okay, And so take in mind that, but this is your opportunity to ask questions on that. And if, again, if I can't answer it, I will let you know. I'll get you an answer um, and get back with you on that, okay? So, and I will jot down what I need to jot down on that. I'm sorry? Probably not. God bless you all at home.